So what would be your your commentary for the uh, the semi sweet? Well, the, the semi sweet I think is a it's a it's a fantastic chocolate. It, it really um, it's definitely one of my favorites just because it's it has these very distinctive sort of honey notes mm -hmm. um, and also has some some melon like uh, fruit flavors. Mm -hmm. um, also has some cherry cherry notes as well. It really reminds me of uh, sort of a dessert wine, like right. Sauterne or something mm -hmm. like that. So I really really enjoy that. Is there a a, a, a pairing? Uh, I don't know if there is. I imagine somebody's probably thought about this. Mm -hmm. uh, pairing of chocolate with wines. Uh, there, you can pair anything with chocolate and nice. any, anything with wine. Right. Um, there's I I haven't explored that as much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of traditional and I just sort of like to, to take sure. chocolate on its own and appreciate it and also appreciate wine on its own. But at the same time, uh, I think there's some fantastic pairings with dessert wines that I've just been sort of getting into. Um, there's a lot of uh, really uh, complimentary flavors that go as well. You are talking about scotch earlier. Right. And scotch has a, there's great potential for pairing scotch in, in dark chocolate, especially some of the darker chocolates. Mm. Um, Gennaro, note to self. So. I don't know if you've tried that yet. But I haven't. It's, well, it's, it sounds it's, like an, an excuse exactly to have right. scotch and chocolate. <laughs> uh, so, uh, for the people who are watching, because a lot of the people who, who go to my blog uh, are interested in travel, sure. and so forth. So, have you, did you travel much in 2007? Uh, yeah, 2007, I, I, I traveled a good bit. Um, what were some of the some of the highlights? Of uh, well, I was uh, probably I was in Honduras, uh, which was fantastic. There's a couple of great cacao projects going on there with some, with some farmers and some development projects, uh, helping farmers really have access to superior uh, genetics of, oh, okay. of, of flavored plants. So, uh, sort of helping encourage them to plant the types of cacao that are going to produce the complex flavors that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, so also, you find the the terroir, so to speak, the the ideal climate mm -hmm. environment that encourage them to use seeds that will flourish in that environment? Yeah, and uh, one, I mean, just talking about terroir, I mean, I think chocolate... So terroir is this very snobby term used in Napa and Sonoma, which is close by, to describe what would be the soil and the climate? Yeah, sort of the general environment. The general environment in which you can uh, plant and cultivate certain types of wine. Mm -hmm. But we'll use that term. Too. Okay. And, well, anyway, they're, they're, they're one, one of the exciting things about being in the chocolate industry right now is that there's so much research yet to be done. So there are there's so many questions yet unanswered is really, you know, what is the relationship between the soil type and the end flavor of a garage right. bean? Mm -hmm. um, and even looking at genetics, understanding the genetics of the, of the, of the cocoa tree and how that affects the flavor. Mm -hmm. So much of this stuff is really in its infancy and in studying this stuff. So it's exciting to sort of be, be working with this right now. That's cool. So Honduras and yeah. then... Uh, Honduras, uh, I was in Ghana. Ghana, uh, which, was, cool. which was fantastic. Uh, it's hard to get plain things to go. It is. It What's is. What's the story with that? I, I know somebody who's had a lot of trouble getting plain things, but I guess they, there's Ghana air. There must be. <laughs> All right, so you went to Ghana. Uh, uh, Ghana, Ghana was amazing. Uh, there's a lot of cocoa. It's, I think it's the second uh, largest producer of cocoa. Wow. Maybe the third um, after, yes. the, after the Ivory Coast. Um, so so Ivory Coast is the number one producer. Ivory Coast is the number one. Um, huge. Uh, West Africa is, I think, produces... Uh, my, my numbers are not right probably, but some, somewhere over 65% of all the world's cocoa. So yeah. And so a, for, for, for those of you, you fact checkers watching, this is a very informal conversation. So go do your own homework and yeah. go to Wikipedia <laughs> and get something 10 times less accurate, or you can actually go somewhere online and get the proper statistics. But yeah. this is an informal conversation among friends eating chocolate. Uh, very cool. So how does someone apply to, to have a job testing chocolate and traveling around the world? How did, how did you end up as well, a product developer at Sharkenberg? I, I actually studied botany, and uh, I just got into tropical tropical botany and, and became enthralled with the cocoa plant, which cool. is... Cool. So did you apply, or did you bump into someone and said, hey, you should be involved uh, with chocolate? I actually t I took, some, I, I took some trips down through uh, Central and South America and worked on cocoa plantations and, and just uh, learned a lot. I learned as much as I could and uh, tried to... I've always been into chocolate and into food, and I worked for a couple different companies, and then uh, now I'm here at Shark and Liver, so. Cool. All right, well, um, I guess we can go take a look. Now, this is top secret stuff, so we, we may not be bringing the, uh, the filming apparatus with us, but uh, take a look at the factory and then continue the conversation. Mmm, this is delicious. We've been left alone in the chocolate mm. factory. I know, left alone in <laughs> Charlie in the chocolate factory. This is delicious. This is milk almond. Delicious. 
word is that it's very common people will pick up one of these, take a small bite, and finish the entire bar and say, delicious, really good. All right, man. So we're looking at the nibs. All right, so as we were talking about earlier, nibs are really just these cocoa beans. These are raw cocoa beans that come straight in out of a burlap sack. So a farmer grows his beans down in the farm in the tropics, um, ferments them, dries them, puts them in a burlap sack. They, you know, hop onto a onto a container ship and they end up here in the port of Oakland and, and they come to our factory. We get the burlap sacks, we open them up, and then we go through and we roast them for about an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, there's a machine called a winnower that just takes the shell off. And then we end up with these, uh, with these little uh, things here called nibs. And these are just, this is, this is just essentially the, the, the inside cotyledon of, of, this, of, this, uh, of this seed. So, um, and, and this is really the core of chocolate. So when you look at these numbers, when you say, you know, 82% cacao, 70%, 62, what's that, what that is saying is how much of that, of this chocolate comes from this, this cocoa nib right here. And you can actually chew on these. You can actually eat these. Absolutely, nibs. absolutely. They, they have, uh, and, and when we do our product development testing, we actually don't add any sugar. Well, all we do is we just take these uh, nibs, we grind them up in, in sort of a small, beefy coffee grinder and we just when we make a an unsweetened paste. No kidding. Yes. Cool. And and then we just taste those. So would you just take a little yeah, bit yeah, beaten? Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm using my fingers like a caveman <laughs> and the spoon is right here. Fingers are okay. So, so Gennaro, what do you wow. think? So each of these is very distinctive. Is that the Madagascar? Yeah. So the Madagascar has a char mm. very, is very wow. characteristically uh, yeah. sort of sour yeah. and, uh, sour. and citrusy. Yeah. Um, this one here is the is the Trinidad. The Trinidad tends to have sort of a fruity spice to it. Um, it often reminds me of this sort of an apple apple cinnamon flavor. Um, and then here we have the Guarimi, which is characteristic uh, sort of big uh, cherry fruit, but also uh, sort of a, has a spiciness as well. Now yeah. keep in mind, every single one of these beans is going to have a different flavor. Right. And, and therefore, every one of these nibs has a distinctive flavor. So that's why we actually, when we're actually doing the trials, we will we'll grind them up and, and, mm -hmm. and have a bigger quantity for the cool. sampling. But it is fun to eat the nibs. They're great sprinkled on ice cream. Really? Uh, mm. Excuse the ice cream. They're, they're actually. They're actually. <laughs> nice. right, I'm bringing right. down the. Yeah. Putting together the list for Saturday. So yeah. we've got scotch. We've got chocolate. We have nibs yeah. and ice cream. Yeah. Mm. They're nice on a salad too. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Nibs on salad. Oh. Delicious.